Good afternoon and welcome to episode number 588. The topic today is trigger warning. Triggers are not to be avoided. 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 Uh, yeah, avoided. <laughs> okay, whoops. Hang on, let me adjust it up a little bit so I'm not feeling as uh, decapitated by the camera. Okay, so before I jump in, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful, and high achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which inspires these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And I've done these talks for a, over a couple of years now. That's why I'm at episode 588. The topic today, because I just saw a meme on Facebook that just was like, oh, talk about this, which is about triggers. So the topic today is trigger warning, as in, I'm warning you about triggers, because triggers are not to be avoided. And I'm going to explain what I mean in a little bit more detail. And one reason I'm talking about this little marketing piece is because I've been reviewing and actually upgrading every day the last few days my uh, Rock Your 2019 playbook because one part of that, I talked about there's seven keys in it to set up your year for success. One of those keys, um, I think it's, what did I call it? I think it's uh, releasing the past is a lot about triggers. So I thought I'll talk about that and explain why it's so useful because let me put it in context of New Year resolution first, then I'm going to go deeper into it in more of the relationship conversation because that's where a lot of it lives. So first of all, when you set up New Year's, New Year, New Year's resolutions, which I hate that term, but people use it. So let's say New Year's intentions for the sake of what I talk about. <laughs> when you set those up, a lot of times we're doing it out of a reaction to something that happened before. For example, if you decided that this year is the day year you're going to achieve that new ideal weight because last year it sucked and you overate and you, and you hated yourself during the whole year, that's not a healthy choice because you're doing things out of reaction. Yes, you may have a motivation towards a goal, but unless you make peace with that past baggage, it doesn't go away. And the thing about triggers, trigger warning again, is that we are very much, um, as human beings, wired up to be um, sensitive to a degree to other people. And triggers, I'm using the context of when the sensitivity we have to something else disturbs our peace, upsets us, knocks us out of equilibrium. Those are polite terms to say, pisses us off. <laughs> because a lot of times what triggers do is undermine our sense of self-support and they make us feel um, reactive. <laughs> it's the nice way of putting it. So the thing about it is a lot of people, because they don't want to be in reactive states or be upset or be pushed off balance, will avoid their triggers. The problem is triggers don't go away. You may be able to avoid them for a week, a month, even a couple of years, but I guarantee you, yes, I can guarantee you, it's part of life. If something triggered you a few years ago that you thought is over because you never dealt with it and you think you walked away from it, I guarantee you at some point in time, something's gonna happen, someone's gonna show up, some event will happen, something will happen in your life that will bring that trigger right up to the surface once again. You'll go, oh crap. Because what you realized is you didn't deal with it three years ago. So avoiding your triggers is extremely, um, well, let's put it this way. It's a preference, but it's not functional. And the challenge people face is when they're dealing with triggers is they get so caught up in the avoiding the pain by pushing it to the side. What they're doing is they're basically pushing it below the surface. They're not actually pushing it away, they're pushing it below. What's happening is they're being, it's being buried. But the thing is, it's almost like, um, I'm almost popping analogies out, so excuse me, I think of what might fit. It's almost like the idea that basically when you think that you've gotten rid of, um, no, that's not good, that's not good one. Okay, I'm not sure if I have an analogy right now, they didn't show up, but we'll keep talking anyway. The, trigger, the challenge with triggers are that they only go away when you resolve them. They don't usually dissipate their own accord because for example, if you're in relationship, let's bring it to relationships. If you're in a relationship with somebody who is constantly pushing your buttons and triggering you because they drink a lot and you decide, okay, I'm gonna leave that relationship, I'll be fine. You may be fine from that relationship, but again, guarantees work this way. Because you probably haven't resolved the pattern of that, unless you do the, unless the thing, unless you do the resolution, the healing transformation of that trigger and what goes with it, you're pretty much gonna attract somebody to do the same thing again. So for example, in this example I'm using, which is not you, but somebody you know, that person was dating somebody, in relationship with somebody who was drinking too much. And they say, okay, I'm done. We're going to get out of this relationship and I'll get rid of that trigger. Not out loud, but it's what they're doing internally. Six months later, they meet somebody new, go out in a relationship, they have a wonderful time. Turns out this person does cocaine. It's not the same addiction, but it's still the same pattern. 
And so the trigger that is still going on is still there. And I'm not using this as to degrade those people who are going through those addictive patterns. But I'm talking about how you as a person would attract relationships that will keep repeating the same trigger again and again and again until you resolve it. And triggers, I'm going to say this one more time, are guaranteed they won't go away until you resolve them. These things that happen in our lives will keep coming back to kick our butts and, and push our buttons unless we do the masterful thing, which is to take care of them by resolving them. How do you resolve them? In, I say, in, in key number six in my, in my uh, Rocket 2019 playbook, I actually work through a whole process and actually give you like five or six different principles that will help you resolve it. Um, but the biggest one for these triggers is triggers are tied to judgment. I'll say that one again, that's the biggest key of all. Triggers are tied to judgment. When somebody triggers you and upsets you, your, your reason you're, you're being triggered and being upset is because you believe something should be different about what happened. If somebody triggers you by doing something like cutting you off on the freeway, your belief is that people should be polite on the freeways. You, seriously, you may, you may not think that's true, but you do. So when someone cuts you up, you get upset. You're basically moving to judgment because they did something that wasn't agreeing with your standards. In fact, what they're doing is that that other person is violating your standards. And it could be something like somebody cutting you off on the freeway, or it could be somebody in a relationship with getting, you know, getting drunk all the time. There's, there's so many different places triggers can show up from when we are, um, well, <laughs> uptight to a degree, and also caught up in this pattern of not being flexible, but also not learning how to love ourselves. What do you mean, how to love yourselves? I'm going to go here. We have standards sometimes to defend ourselves from being hurt. Those standards have been put in place from when we were younger, and this structure, this, this, hmm, this cage we put ourselves in, is largely based on defense mechanisms. Using the freeway for example for a moment. If you've been on the freeway and someone cuts you up, if you are in a place where you realize that everybody does their own thing and it doesn't affect you, and as long as you're safe, you're okay, that cutting you up probably wouldn't really bother you. You'd probably say, you know what, that's fine. They're on a hurry, go somewhere, let them go. And you're totally aligned to that value. You're totally aligned to that truth. But when you get upset and you're judging that person when they get off the freeway and you're still four, four exits down, and you're still judging them, that's your stuff, honey. You need to do some work on yourself because that's eating away at you inside. So it's the self-centric viewpoint I'm talking about here. And I talk about self-love in my self-love practice and I'll tell you about that later on. But it's truly about when you focus love on yourself and you do these things called um, forgiveness, compassion, um, there's one other one. Well, loving, <laughs> that's an obvious one. When you apply those things to yourself, what happens is you free yourself from these triggers, these judgments, because triggers and judgments pretty much go hand in hand. So things that trigger you are tied to judgments because you have a rule book. Well, let's say it this way. We all have rule books, <laughs> let's be solely honest about this, that put us in a place of judgment about what happens in life. We have standards that we run where people shouldn't be doing certain things and when they do, we get upset. And we have this about people on the television and I'm not going to say any names. We have that for people who are in, driving down the freeway next to us, people in our families, people in our relationships, people in our businesses. These are people that will trigger us when we are in a place where we don't have, sorry, when we have standards that are not a place of, of um, I'm going to say anything, sorry, I'm going in the path I'm not going to do. Let's back up a second. Start over. Your, your tr Karen, your, so your trigger of repeatedly being targeted by narcissists force you to create stronger personal boundaries. That's, an, that's another way of doing it. Yes, absolutely. And, this is th and that's actually a powerful teaching right there. Your trigger of being, well, you're being triggered because you're being targeted by narcissists and you chose to set up healthier boundaries. You didn't let people in who exhibited that behavior is what I would rephrase that as probably. But that's the thing is you change what's happening. Part of it though is also, and I'm gonna go this part of it, which is not quite what Karen said because it's different than what I'm saying, is that when we start forgiving ourselves for judgments we place on others, and especially when we forgive ourselves for judgments we place on ourselves, that's when the triggers dissipate. Oftentimes triggers are reminding us of things where we're not in alignment with ourselves. I mentioned triggers and judgments do go together. Here's another level of that. If we've made mistakes in the past and we haven't forgiven ourselves for those mistakes that we judged about ourselves, we'll be triggered by things that remind us of that situation. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> truthfully, this is one of those power, truthful, truthfully, 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 I'm get my words right here. 
we're in this place where a lot of what happens in our lives are repeat patterns and repeat reminders of what happened in our past. So for example, in a past relationship, if you were with somebody who abandoned you, I'm going down these paths to be able to make a point. They're not the most ideal ones, but I'm making some points here. And you left that relationship finally, you got yourself out of the relationship, and you carried judgments around since that point where you judge yourself for somehow being wrong because they left you, they abandoned you. You move into a new relationship, that person who you move into a relationship, as I mentioned before with the, the drinking situation, will do something that will remind you of that pattern. They'll do something that triggers, again, that judgment you carry. So if you felt unworthy or somehow you didn't deserve it, you didn't deserve full love because they, they, the, this person in the past relationship deserted you, in this relationship, they may do something totally different. They may just be a workaholic. They're abandoning you but not leaving the relationship, but you feel the same trigger. And that same trigger will resurface the judgment and self-recrimination you're still carrying. So triggers and judgments go, go together a large lot of the time. And in personal stuff, stuff, personal processes, <laughs> perceptions, beingness, if we don't resolve those triggers, and I'm talking about using forgiveness as a powerful tool to raise the judgments, so let me just use the word judgment instead. If we don't raise those judgments, they continue to gnaw away at our self-esteem, and they continue to gnaw away at our self-support, which is why I keep promoting my self-love practice, because that helps you learn how to forgive yourself, because you can't, can you? I don't believe you can forgive yourself without love, because love is a key c component, especially compassion, to forgive yourself. Yes, thank you, Karen. Yes, triggers will continue to bubble up until healed. Exactly. That, that's kind of what this is about. <laughs> so if you're going through some of that experience yourself, and I'm using this as a New Year's reminder because the New Year brings up lots of stuff for people, like those resolutions last year didn't work, let me try them again this year, and they still don't work. This is the trap we fall into when we're running through this paradigm of, I'll just get over it and move on. So again, avoiding triggers doesn't work. Facing them, dealing with them, resolving them does. And healing them, as Karen mentioned here exactly, is the way to do that. The way you heal triggers, or in fact, the way you heal judgments that are triggering to you, is with self-forgiveness. That simple. It's also that powerful. And for a lot of people, forgiveness is something they've never even dealt with before. It's the F word. And not the four-letter one, but the bigger one. <laughs> and so by recognizing that forgiveness is a tool, you can work with that in a way that will allow you to free up and release the judgments. And basically what you do is restore yourself back to yourself. Just, I'm just choosing which point to go down now. Rather than teach you that now, because this is, this is actually part of my coaching work, and but I, I do have it as part of my um, Rocket 2019 workbook, so I'll put the link in for that. You can check it out if you want it. That's step number six, or key number six in there. Excuse me, that's the second piece of key number six in there, so you can use it if you want it. But I am recommending forgiveness as a powerful tool. And yes, it does relate to New Year's resolutions. Trust me, I talk about that. In my, I, I, as I said, I've been editing and rewriting my Rocket 2019 playbook for the last couple of days. So I was, I'm using it myself now to really work on my own New Year's intentions. And so I've been reflecting on how it's been written and I've actually made it deeper than it was. So good time to get it because I just put it up, updated again. So forgiveness is a powerful key to heal those triggers that are judgment related because triggers and judgment tend to go together. And avoiding them is a really good way of just prolonging the agony. If you don't want to prolong the agony, deal with them, face them, heal them once and for all. Got my point? I think that's clear enough. With that, I want to thank you for watching. I'm going to let you know that the replays will be available online. I'll give you those links in a second. And also the comments in the comments, I'll add the links for the self-love guided meditation and the Rocket 2019 work, um, playbook workbook. I still haven't got the name finalized um, because it's a playbook, but it's not a, not a sports game. It's a workbook, but it's not hard work. That's why it's like a play workbook. So that'll be on my that'll be in the comments as well when I sign off. Um, and and that's that that's so I was gonna no, no I'm not gonna show that. <laughs> I was gonna show you some more stuff, but I'll be for tomorrow. Um, <laughs> it's the show and tell. That'll be for tomorrow. So anyway, replay. So by the way, if you have any questions, comments, you're welcome, Karen. Thanks for being in my broadcast and for commenting and interacting. I appreciate it. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do these every day at five PM Pacific time. This is my service, inspiration, guide, help to those of you who are watching, who want help in relationships, in love, in life, in general support, in getting better in what you do. That sort of came out okay. Um, the replays for these, you can find my other broadcast. This is number 588 in an ongoing daily series of talks. 
on my, this is my personal page I do the Facebook Live on, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays on Facebook go to my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. And then I put them all onto YouTube. So if you want to follow me on YouTube, you can subscribe to my channel, which is Barry Selby. Also, all my social media is Barry Selby. You can um, find the playlist on there, which is Messages from the Masculine, and you can watch all my broadcasts in any order you want. You can sort, search through them, keyword search, et cetera, et cetera, and, and have fun. Thirdly, I do have a podcast that I've been adding these to, which is also called Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. You can subscribe to that and download them, the audios, and listen to them when you want. Um, I think that's about it. Questions, comments about this, please put them below, and I'll respond when I sign off here or on YouTube, um, here being Facebook Live. And uh, I'll put the links in the comments for you to check them out. And again, this is a perfect time, starting the new year fresh, to resolve and heal those triggers that have been dragging you through the mud for the last year, two years beyond. Take care of yourself. Do what you need to do to get back to the loving. And if you want support, reach out. That's what I'm here for. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. And uh, be good to yourself. It's a new year, clean slate. Let's see what we can make of it. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.